Good morning and good evening. Welcome to Lenovo's earnings webcast. Thanks to everyone for joining us. This is Jenny Lai, Vice President of Investor Relations. Before we start, let me introduce our management team joining the call today. We have Lenovo's Chairman and CEO, Mr. Yang Yuanqin, Corporate President and CEO, Mr. Gianfranco Lenchi, Group CFO, Mr. Wang Waimin, President of Data Center Group, Mr. Kurt Gaojin, and President of Motorola, Mr. Sergio Buniak. We will begin with a presentation shortly, and after that, we will open the call for questions. Without further ado, let me turn the call over to Yuan Qin. Yuan Qin, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Before we start, I want to share my heartfelt sympathy to those affected by the novel coronavirus. I also would like to express my deepest appreciation to all medical professionals for their dedication in fighting the diseases. Lenovo also responded immediately to the outbreak. We have donated and installed all IT equipment necessary to construct the two new hospitals in Wuhan. Donation from Lenovo employees and the Lenovo Foundation has arrived at places in need. We have also given away 100 activation keys of our remote office and online meeting solutions to hospitals and small and medium-sized businesses, which are heavily impacted by the epidemic. Although the outbreak happened around the Chinese New Year, Lenovo reacted right away and worked day and night throughout the holiday to implement a series of measures to protect the safety and the well-being of our employees. Thanks to our global manufacturing footprint, while our factories in China are some of the first ones to resume production in the industry. Our factories outside of China continued to operate. While the demand in China is impacted temporarily, the demand from the rest of the world remains strong, which will help accelerate the recovery of our capacity in China. We have also been working closely with our supply chain partners to ensure normal operation. Now, let me turn to our quarterly earnings. Last quarter, despite the geopolitical uncertainties and the industry-wide supply shortages, we demonstrated our world-class operation and the strategy execution capability in delivering a uh, record-setting performance. Both global revenue and uh, pre-tax income reached uh, all-time highs. Our global revenue was 14.1 billion U.S. dollars. Pre-tax income grew by double digits year on year and reached 390 million U.S. dollars. Net income also improved by double digits year on year to 258 million U.S. dollars. These results would not be possible without our operational excellence, which allowed us to overcome the severe industry-wide CPU shortage. We have quickly adjusted our product portfolio, converted every available supply to our product that meets our customers' requirement, and greatly reduced our finished goods inventory. So these efforts enabled our PC and smart device business to deliver all-time records in revenue, in pre-tax income, and in profit margin. 
you can see, we not only extended our clear number one position with record high shipments, but also outperformed the market year on year. Our strategy to focus on high growth and the premier segments continues to deliver results. The volume in gaming, sing and light, visuals, workstations, and Chromebooks continued to grow at a higher double digits and significantly outgrew the market year on year. Innovation provides us another important growth driver at the recent Consumer Electronics Show. We demonstrated our leading technology in 5G and uh, affordable with uh, innovative products such as the world's first uh, 5G PC and the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold, which was named one of Time's 2019 best inventions. The ThinkBook Plus notebook PC with e ink display on top also received a very positive feedback. Looking forward, while micro challenges may continue, with proven operational excellence and breakthrough innovation, we are confident that we will continue to drive premier to market growth in our PC business and industry leading profitability. Our mobile business delivered its fifth consecutive profitable quarter. In our stronghold, Latin America, our volume outgrew the market by 19 points while improving profitability. Going forward, our mobile business will continue to strengthen profitability while driving growth in new markets. Our new Motorola Razr affordable has received uh, greater responses from investors, media, and uh, tech opinion leaders. We will build on this excitement to re-enter the premier segment. In data center, our server volume grew by 18% year on year, though data center revenue remained flat year on year as a sharp component price reduction resulted in re erosion of uh, average sales price. Profitability continued to improve year on year. Our now hyperscale business had its highest revenue in four years and grew nearly eight, uh, 16%. Especially in China, it was up almost uh, 46% year year. We continue to see strong over 40% year year revenue growth in software defined infrastructure and storage. Looking forward, we will resume revenue growth in DCG. In our hyperscale business, we will expand our business with the existing customers and continue to acquire new customers. In our now hyperscale business, we will continue to drive premier to market growth in servers, software defined infrastructure, high performance computing, storage, software and services, with increasing customer diversity and broader indirect channels. Our intelligent transformation continued to show strong momentum. In smart IoT, revenue almost quadrupled year on year, driven by strong growth in AR, VR, smart home, and smart office. Smart infrastructure also grew more than 50% year on year, driven by software defined and network functional virtualization. Smart vertical revenue doubled 
thanks to triple digit revenue growth in data intelligent business group, smart healthcare, and smart education solutions. We have noticed accelerated demand in China for our remote office, online education, online healthcare, and the other online services solution due to impact of the ongoing epidemic. Last but not least, as we mentioned last quarter, our software and services revenue continued its hyper growth and reached the one billion US dollar in a quarter for the first time, up for the one percent year on year. Looking forward, things there are still much uncertainty around the novel coronavirus. We will actively manage this evolving situation through our geographic balance, operational excellence, and the solid strategy execution. We are confident in overcoming this challenge and quickly resume to the normal. Thank you. Now let me turn it over to our CFO, Wei Ming. Wei Ming, please. Uh, thank you, Yuan Qing. I will now take you through Lenovo's financial and operational performance in Q3 fiscal year 2020. Next chart, please. Let me share with you the financial highlights. We are pleased to announce another record quarter for the group. Our third quarter revenue was $14.1 billion, a new record and up 0.5% year-on-year, or nearly 2% in constant currency. Our business groups deliver exceptional execution against a backdrop of severe supply constraint. Gross profit increased 10% year-on-year, and gross profit margin expanded 1.5 percentage points to 16.1%, thanks to favorable sales mix. Our team efforts in driving continued sales mix improvement paid off. The improvement of data center business was again in a positive profit catalyst. Our transformation actions had led to accelerated growth in high margin software and services business and in turn improved overall profitability. Operating expenses rose 10% to 1.8 billion and the E2R ratio was 12.6%, up 1.1 percentage points year on year, driven by our continued investment in sales, marketing, research and development. The group PDI increased 11% year on year and PDI dollar is at an all time high. Among all business groups, our PCSD business is the largest in the world, <coughs> with the highest ever PDI margin, while MBG and DCG continue to improve their profitability. Our ability to set a new milestone in PDI demonstrated our ability to deliver strong margins and robust growth on earnings per share despite the supply constraint. Net profit attributable to equity holders was $258 million, up 11% year on year. Basic earnings per share came in at 2.16 US cents, up from 1.96 US cents last year. Next chart, please. In Q3, <coughs> our cash generated in operation was 538 million, compared to 1.2 billion cash generating in the first half of the fiscal year. We made less cash from operations compared to the corresponding period last year, due to the two initiatives we took in the quarter. We have built some strategic position on critical paths, leading to a 206 million increase in total inventory year on year during the quarter, and our accounts receivable factoring volume dropped year to year. Next chart, please. Our intelligent device business group, consisting of PC and smart device business group and mobile business group, achieved a record quarterly revenue thanks to the strong growth in premium segments within PCSD and the strength in the software and services business. With the all-time high pre-tax margin in PCSD and proper expansion in MBG, our IDG deliver a PDI of 687 million, up 17% year on year, and its PDI margin increased 0.8 percentage point year on year to 5.5%. Next slide, please. In Q3, despite being hit by key component shortage, the PCSD business group revenue grew 3% year on year to a record of 11.1 billion. Our team continued to execute its strategy to capitalize on the high growth and premium segments growth potential. The revenue from premium products across workstation, 
thin and light, visual and gaming PC grew double digits year on year and now contribute more than half of PCSD's revenue. We are making important progress in our intelligent transformation by focusing on our software and services business, with its revenue up by a strong double digit year on year and carry the highest margin profile among all products. Leveraging this strategic shift in sales mix, the PCSD business group set a record PDI margin of 6.2% in quarter three and reinforced its leadership position not only in the PC shipments but also profitability. Next chart, please. <coughs> MBG also suffered from a supply constraint resulting in a year-on-year -year revenue decline of 17%. Its focused strategy to invest and develop the business in regions where it has competitive advantages remain effective, helping MBG deliver positive PDI for the fifth consecutive quarter. Latin America remained a stronghold and MBG's margin further expanded in this region. The MBG business is accelerating its innovation by launching attractive new products, including the recently announced foldable smartphone, the Razer. This product has earned positive customer reviews and will start contributing to the business revenue as well as providing an opportunity to upsell and re-enter the premium segment. Next slide, please. In data center group, the business momentum is improving. Our server shipments grew 18% year on year, although revenue growth was again constrained by low average selling prices, a lingering problem caused by the significant correction in commodity prices. Our DCG revenue was 1.6 billion, largely flat year on year. Our non hyperscale business reported its highest quarterly revenue in four years, representing double digit year on year growth. We delivered strong growth in data center infrastructure, software defined infrastructure, storage, and software and services. Our DCG operation in China seized the opportunity to broaden its sales coverage and product portfolio. The storage revenue grew at a strong double digit rate thanks to the NetApp joint venture and new product growth in entry and mid-range flash arrays. Our software-defined infrastructure product performance helped win market share and achieve strong double-digit revenue growth. For hyperscale business, the annual revenue comparison was most difficult for the period under review, and therefore its revenue was still down year on year. However, the price erosion will come to an anniversary after this quarter, implying easier base of comparison going forward. Our DCG strategy is to balance between future investment and profitability. In Q3, the business further narrowed its losses by US dollar 8 million year on year to US dollar 47 million. Next chart, please. Looking forward, macro risk factors, especially novel coronavirus outbreak, could bring short term volatility. The unfortunate health crisis could lead to meaningful disruption in China's demand and supply chain. For us, the delay in employees returning to work has had the biggest impact on our business. The majority of our factories in China have reopened and are now operational, albeit on a limited basis due to transportation and travel limitations. Our suppliers and logistics service across the country also are affected. Given the situation remains extremely dynamic, it is difficult to provide an accurate estimation of the full financial impact. Nevertheless, we believe this is a one-off event, and our priority is to work with our supply chain to regain 100% capacity as soon as possible. We have contingency plan in place, and will leverage our global manufacturing capabilities and strategic supplier partnership. We expect a rebound of demand in China after stabilization of the health crisis. With the demand from the rest of the world remain strong, will help accelerate the recovery of our business in China. Further, our demand drivers could also emerge to bode well for our businesses. For example, our PCSD and DCG businesses are well poised to benefit from the trend of remote education, remote work, home entertainment, and remote health consulting. We are confident of driving long-term profitable growth when we aim to deliver a premium to market growth on the group top slide. For PCSD, our goal is to continuously deliver industry-leading profitability and increase sales in high growth and premium segments, as well as accelerating our software and services expansion 
to sustain premium to market revenue growth. For mobile, we will continue to deliver innovative new products. Together with the launch of our 5G services, we look for potential growth opportunities by building more profitable core markets. For data center business, our journey to improvement has just begun. The trend of data growth is expected to accelerate following the development of more products and applications featuring new technologies including 5G. Lenovo will tap into this opportunity to drive growth in multiple segments including enterprise server, software-defined infrastructure, storage, and software and services. For hyperscale business, the group will leverage its differentiated in-house design and in manufacturing capability to broaden its customer base. We are going to increase our pocket share within existing customers by expanding product coverage from service to storage. We expect an improvement of hyperscale business and better profitability when the new share wins are fully operational. Thank you. And now we can take your questions. Thank you, Yanin. Now we are open online for questions, and this session will be in English only. Please be reminded to limit yourself to two questions at a time. Please also state your name and company before asking a question. Operator, I'll turn it over to you now. Please give us your instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press the pound or hash key. We have the first questions comes from the line of Gofu Hariharan from JP Morgan. Please ask a question. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, thanks for taking my questions and congrats on the great results in the December quarter. Uh, first of all, uh, just to uh, get some more clarity on the near-term uh, challenges, uh, could you talk a little bit more specific on uh, both the demand outlook uh, given the virus outbreak um, as well as on the supply side, uh, when do we expect to get back to a reasonable level of supply um, for various product groups uh, over the next couple of months? Uh, that's my first question. Uh, second question is on the server side, on data center group. Uh, it looks like um, hyperscale seems to be the only area which is not yet ramping up in terms of growth. Uh, Non-hyperscale growth seems to be uh, ramping up both uh, outside China as well as in China. Uh, could we talk a little bit about uh, what kind of growth are we expecting either for fiscal 21 or calendar 20? Uh, and uh, when do we expect hyperscale uh, to come back to strong double-digit growth? Uh, after being relatively weak in the last uh, several quarters. Thank you. Thank you, Doku. I will uh, answer your first question. Uh, so probably Jack Franco can uh, help uh, to add something. Then uh, uh, Kirk uh, Skogan will answer your uh, second question. Uh, so definitely a uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak uh, impacts our uh, uh, demand in China and our production uh, capacity uh, uh, in China as well. Uh, mainly because uh, uh, three reasons. Uh, first, uh, so it delayed our factory reopen time. Uh, uh, second, uh, so less work will come back uh, to the factory. Uh, third, uh, supply is also uh, impacted, uh, particularly the comp components that are produced by the uh, smaller uh, uh, suppliers, uh, so they also uh, face the issue uh, to reopen the factory. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, for Lenovo, we are uh, more optimistic um, uh, the, uh, on our supply, although uh, it uh, will be impacted uh, uh, in this quarter as well. Uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> 
regarding of the factory reopen, re uh, so now, by now, uh, most of our factories uh, uh, in China have already been uh, reopened uh, again, except for uh, Wuhan and the uh, Chengdu uh, factories, we still wait for government uh, gu uh, guidance uh, in uh, those two uh, cities. Uh, regarding of uh, workers, uh, so uh, we uh, we are providing support and incentive uh, to encourage more workers to, to come back uh, to work. Uh, so uh, two factories are more important for our PC uh, 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 supply. Uh, one is Shenzhen, another is Hefei. So our current estimation uh, is uh, by the end of this month, uh, we can assume 100% uh, 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 capacity. Uh, so in Shenzhen, uh, by the end of by end of this month, and we can assume 70% uh, capacity. Uh, uh, in Hefei uh, by the end of this uh, this month. Uh, so definitely uh, for uh, uh, Wuhan factory, uh, so it's mainly for uh, 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 smartphone. Uh, so we are waiting uh, uh, for government uh, uh, guidance to uh, reopen again. And uh, Chengdu, Chengdu is mainly for uh, for uh, desktop. Uh, and uh, and also, uh, so uh, you know, uh, Lenovo has uh, has a very diverse, diversified uh, manufacturing uh, uh, footprint. Uh, so uh, we actually have uh, the global footprint. So that will help uh, help uh, as well. Uh, as well. Uh, so uh, we have a smartphone uh, manu manu uh, manufacturing factory in uh, Brazil, uh, in India. Uh, so that will that will. Uh, help our smartphone business, particularly in uh, Latin America and then in uh, North America. Uh, and also we, we have a factory in Japan, uh, in uh, Mexico, uh, in U.S. Uh, for PC and, uh, uh, and the server as well. Uh, so that will help uh, uh, our uh, uh, PC and the uh, server business uh, in the rest of the world. Uh, from a demand point of view, uh, so uh, so definitely China uh, uh, current quarter will be impacted. Uh, so, but the uh, the good news is the rest of the world our uh, demand uh, for all our products, uh, including uh, PC, smartphone, and uh, uh, data center, are still very strong. Uh, so uh, that uh, not only we can uh, leverage our uh, uh, rest of the world uh, manufacturing facility uh, to fulfill uh, this demand, uh, but also uh, so that we can help uh, uh, our China uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, factory uh, to uh, ramp up. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, regarding of the, your, your uh, uh, first, uh, first question. So I don't know whether Jack Frank or you, uh, you want to add something uh, to. Uh, so that, oh, by the way, uh, so uh, regarding of the supply, uh, so I, I I talked about the, the, the third bottleneck is the supply. Uh, so uh, right after the uh, uh, the outbreak of the uh, virus, uh, so we uh, uh, realized the issue. Uh, so we immediately uh, put in uh, some supply uh, to our to our uh, uh, stock, uh, uh, to, uh, to our warehouse. Uh, so that uh, I think uh, uh, for a short -term period, uh, we have enough components uh, to resume the uh, operation, uh, resume the factory uh, production. Uh, and also, uh, we are uh, helping uh, uh, those suppliers, uh, uh, smaller suppliers, to resume uh, work, to resume the, the operation, so that. Uh, from a longer point, uh, term point of view, uh, so we still can have enough uh, component mm -hmm. supply. So that's, uh, that's my answer. So, Jiang you, you want to add something here? Yeah, I think there are one, a couple of things. One, um, because you asked, one, uh, we will be back to full capacity. I think that uh, within uh, Q1, by the end of March, we should be able, at least uh, in FA and some other factory, to be back at 100% capacity. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we see for sure the slowdown in China. 
Uh, on the other side, we still see very strong demand on PC in uh, the rest of the world. Uh, U.S., Sydney, um, Japan, uh, Asia Pacific. So I think in, in terms of demand in the rest of the world, uh, we still see a very good uh, demand. Uh, the only problem is, uh, is really in China. And even the transition to the time of transition to Windows 10 uh, clearly is not uh, is not over yet. Uh, because even in Japan, uh, that uh, the, 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 the the forecast or the the, the projection from um, major uh, market analysts, uh, it was very negative. Uh, we still see a very good demand. Yeah. So uh, by the way. Uh, so. Uh, uh, this quarter uh, is not uh, Lenovo's uh, peak quarter. Uh, so our peak quarter was actually last quarter, Q3, yes. uh, in our fiscal year. So, uh, so when I talk about the, the, the capacity, it's definitely uh, about the, the, the peak capacity. So that means uh, uh, the impact to our shipment uh, in this quarter will be less than uh, last quarter uh, if we, we face the same situation. Uh, so that's uh, uh, what I want to uh, uh, want you to understand. Okay, so uh, Kirk, would you please answer the second question? Yeah, this is Kirk speaking. So with regard to the hyperscale business, um, I think we have very strong confidence as we go into our next fiscal year that demand is definitely recovering. Uh, at the existing accounts we have, we've been holding or growing share relatively consistently. A few of those customers were still working through excess capacity, but uh, there's a few things that I think should give us uh, confidence. Number one, we're winning business now in storage, not just in the server space. And we're winning business in the hundreds of millions of dollar range in storage, which is a first for us. The second is we have confidence because in the past we have been a system integrator and perhaps not the motherboard supplier to some of these large accounts. But with our ODM Plus strategy, we know, you know, 18 months in advance that we have gotten design wins for motherboards, and that will improve uh, our profitability as well as our ability to manage our uh, supply chain um, more effectively than if we were acquiring boards from an ODM. The third thing is we're seeing uh, components like SSD and memory that had seen the largest drops in a decade uh, now uh, beginning to grow again, which will uh, improve the revenue outlook year on year. So uh, I would say, you know, as, as we've said before, we're in – six of the top ten hyperscalers in the world, and uh, we expect in the next fiscal year to be growing uh, significantly across uh, almost all of those. In addition, we just added a, uh, a sales force to cover the next wave of hyperscalers globally, and we have acquired now dozens of new customers that will be coming online uh, in the next fiscal year. You know, we are waiting week by week to look at where we do rely on ODMs for motherboards, how their factories are coming back. Um, but for the stuff we have internally, we have plants in Hungary, plants in Monterey, and plants in Shenzhen that are all up and operationally um, supplying the demand this quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are ready. Operator, we are ready for next question, please. Next question comes from the line of Abley from Bank of America. Please ask a question. Uh, uh, hi, Jenny and the management team. I'm grateful for good result. Actually, I would like to have an update on the overview of sector like uh, OPC. I think the memory price hike is partly for data center, but do you worry about the memory price hike would impact on your PC margin? Also, on smartphone. Yeah, I can understand like a uh, near term demand could be kept due to the coronavirus in China. But uh, how do you feel like uh, the 4G smartphone inventory in China 
I feel like uh, the 4G smartphone inventory is really high. And uh, lastly, about data center, uh, uh, can I have more update about like uh, what would be the driver? It's a hyperscaler enterprise in the China or non-China. Thank you. So, uh, Chianfaka, could you please uh, answer uh, uh, the memory price issue? Probably, uh, uh, can, 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 can help on the 4G uh, inventory. Yeah, you can use. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. No, on memory, we we see some, uh, I would say, very small increase. I would say mainly SSD rather than uh, rather than uh, DRAM. Uh, we need we need to see with the coronavirus and with the current in the current environment what is going to happen in the next uh, couple of quarters. Uh, because we have seen already during the last couple of weeks uh, that uh, <laughs> rather than increase there, uh, they start to decrease again, so we start to see memory going down again. Uh, but I think uh, in terms of impact uh, on the margin, I don't see any major issue in terms of uh, in impact on, uh, on the margin. Uh, for a couple of reasons, we have uh, built up a very good inventory in terms of memory, so we have uh, enough uh, Components uh, for uh, at least for this quarter and also next quarter, uh, and on the other side, uh, the price are now slowing down again, mm, and we will manage uh, also in terms of configuration and pricing uh, in order to avoid any impact on the on the margin. So, frankly speaking, I, I don't see any major uh, issues on uh, on uh, on memory. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gianfranco. Uh, so, Buniato, could you please uh, answer the 4G inventory issue? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we see the opposite. I think our inventory levels are slightly below target as we ended Q3 uh, all over the globe, uh, including uh, China. Uh, our activations in Q3 uh, were much higher than our selling by almost half a million globally. Uh, what's not normal for this period, and uh, in uh, in this current quarter, uh, we are still seeing very strong activations, even with some measures we take to contain uh, the expenses. So we expect inventory by the end of this quarter, uh, as we are not seeing any drop in activations uh, to be extremely healthy. Uh, both in 4G and, of course, we are just launching uh, 5G phones uh, in the next few weeks. So. We, we, I see actually the opposite right now. We have a very health uh, inventory position, uh, much, much better than a year ago and much better than one quarter ago. What's not normal for this uh, time of the year? Yeah, so I agree with uh, uh, Bunia. So actually in the rest of the world, so last quarter, uh, so we our uh, our uh, volume and revenue revenue uh, uh, drop as mainly because uh, uh, the supply uh, supply issue uh, supply shortage. Uh, so actually, we we sold uh, more uh, than we uh, uh, we sold out more uh, in the in the retail uh, uh, than uh, we uh, sell into the the distributor and the, and the uh, retail retailers. So we don't have the the, the uh, inventory issue in the rest of the world. So I think uh, probably the, the, the majority inventory you talked about is in China. Uh, but, uh, fortunately, in China, we our business is not rather big, uh, so actually we don't have the uh, inventory issue uh, uh, as well. Uh, so that will uh, probably give us more opportunity uh, to grow our business. Uh, with uh, new products. Okay, so uh, uh, regarding of the DCG, so uh, Kirk, uh, uh, could you please uh, answer the, 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 the last question? Yeah, I think the, the simplest answer is we're seeing a strong premium to market across all geographies and in all segments. So hyperscale demand is recovering and strong 
It should get stronger each quarter as we go uh, through the next fiscal year. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, not just in servers but also in storage and with improved profitability as higher-end workloads like SAP HANA move to the cloud, we're supplying not just two-socket but four-socket and even eight-socket capabilities to some of the large cloud providers to meet that demand, and, and obviously those margins are better than um, some of the entry products. Uh, our non-hyperscale revenue, as you heard, was the highest in four years. And we're seeing, you know, premium to market uh, growth, and we should continue to see that across software-defined infrastructure. We're seeing uh, strong growth across our hyper-converged infrastructure from Microsoft, from Nutanix, from VMware, as well as from smaller players like uh, Pivot3. Uh, on storage, especially in all flash arrays and hybrid flash arrays, uh, you know, we've seen more than 40%. Uh, growth across uh, our aggregate storage business, uh, both with the NetApp joint venture in China, but also with the expanded entry and mid-range portfolio we have in the rest of the world. Uh, on services, we're making very good uh, progress. Our catch rate on services penetration is up another 7% year on year. So we have our highest ever deferred revenue on the balance sheet now which should continue, again, consistently improving every quarter. And then in supercomputing, you know, we've uh, continued to use our Neptune warm water cooling to uh, deliver on the top 500 list. Now one in three of the top 500 computers in the world run Lenovo, and we have coverage now in 50% of the countries that are even on the list. So that's 14 countries in the world where we're number one in total cores, number one in aggregate performance with, with 35% share. So the simplest answer to your question is we're seeing strong premium to market growth and, and want to continue that on the top line. And, you know, this is our 10th consecutive quarter of PTI improvement. We want to continue that while still um, driving premium to market revenue growth. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Operator, we are ready for the next question. Next question comes from the line of Marina Jane from Goldman Sachs. Please ask a question. Yes, hi. Uh, this is Verena from Goldman. Uh, my first question is on data center. So I would like to know, uh, you mentioned that your software defined in infrastructure continue to win the market share. So could you elaborate more like what's our edges uh, advantages here and who we are winning over the market share and what's our target market? Is it China or, or uh, outside of China? And my second question is on smartphones. So I would like to know like uh, how much of the production is coming from the Wuhan uh, factory and can our other uh, factories cover the supply? And uh, will this uh, affect our mobile business profitability? Thank you. Yeah, so, so, so Mrs. Kirk, uh, I can answer the first question, maybe, on software design? Yes, yeah, please. Go ahead, Mr. Kirk. Yeah, so, so I think uh, what, what we are seeing is uh, in whether you're talking about the, the larger players like Nutanix, Microsoft, and VMware, in, in many cases, what we're hearing from our partners is that we may not be their largest partner, but we're definitely their fastest growing partner. So we're seeing a good balance and, and good consistent growth across Nutanix, VMware, uh, and Microsoft on Azure HDI and others. Um, there's also some smaller players like Scale Computing, Pivot 3, where we're doing uh, some really good work around smart city uh, in terms of protecting citizens, like we've said publicly before, for cities like uh, Bogota and, and others. So um, certainly in China, we're also seeing strong growth there, but it's been a consistent, um, you know, strong premium to market quarter after quarter for many quarters now, and we think that will continue. You know, our differentiation is we've built our Think Agile brand um, to make it the most simple, uh, highest performance, highest reliable solution in the market. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Punya, 
could you please answer the second question? So, uh, how much volume uh, uh, we could yeah. have a smartphone in Wuhan? So, uh, let me say, for, so first, uh, half of our volume uh, is produced, produced, manufactured in China, and uh, around 60 to 70 percent of that in Wuhan. So uh, the factories will be opening tomorrow, and uh, I think uh, we expect some short-term volatility, and we'll manage through that. Now, that said, uh, the Brazil factory, the India factory, uh, they can, uh, they, 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 we can increase capacity as if we need uh, in the near future. So we are, we are managing carefully. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, around half in China, from what? 70% in Wuhan. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we actually uh, so, uh, not just uh, produce uh, smartphones by ourselves, we also leverage the uh, uh, ODM uh, so, to produce for us. Uh, so uh, in this conjunction, so definitely we try to, uh, to, to, to sh uh, shift some uh, uh, production uh, from a Wuhan factory to the third party. Uh, uh, as well, uh, so uh, if they can uh, resume the, the operation uh, earlier than in Wuhan, so definitely that will help. Yeah, actually, yes, we are already doing that. So in many parts of China, on the ODMs, our production has resumed last week. So we are making some. Because yeah, we, 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 I think uh, we. Uh, given the number of global footprint, so uh, although uh, it, uh, it will still see uh, the <coughs> impact, uh, so we are trying to mitigate the impact to the minimum. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, so the, the maximum uh, volume uh, to impact our smartphone uh, is just uh, uh, one or two million. So we that's. Uh, uh, that's the, 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 the maximum, uh, so, but uh, we, we, we definitely have the care to mitigate that. Okay. Thank you. Um, operator, uh, we are open for the last question, please. The last question comes from the line of Hui Chen Yan from CICC. Please ask a question. Hi, congratulations. This is Hui Chen Yan from CICC. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I have uh, two questions. The first is also regarding to uh, the the shortage, the, the uh, power shortage. I was wondering about the PCSD and the MPG. If we don't consider the virus, uh, it, it, uh, because you are talking about the shortage, and can I can I understand this as a uh, uh, pressure to the uh, of uh, of uh, growth margin to the next next uh, uh, quarter because uh, the, the shortage will continue. And the second thing is about the, uh, the uh, can I have two numbers? Of course, the, the percentage of revenue of your MDG in both uh, source and America. The second is the percentage of hyperscale server in your DCG sector. Thanks. So, so can, can I could you please answer uh, the margin impact, If we, if the shortage will, will continue, I, I suppose. Uh, Hello? No, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that, 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 that there are two different, uh, I would say. When you talk about the shortage, I think there are two different. Uh, uh, kind of shortage. One is for sure the, the impact uh, coming from the coronavirus, and the other is, is that we mm -hmm. still we still see some uh, shortage on the CPU. Uh, the situation is improving, but it's not uh, yet uh, uh, normalized. Uh, and but frankly speaking, on both, as you see from Q3 result, uh, I don't see any. Any negative impact on the margin? Maybe we can get some positive impact from the margin simply because the entire market will be short of a product. So there is no reason to, to lower down the, 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 
the dump price or uh, to take action uh, or to clean inventory, or all these things are, uh, are gone. Mm. And uh, in terms of uh, in terms of margin, we have been able to, if I look at Q3, and if you look at the result, uh, we have been able even you know, to improve margin in a difficult situation in terms of uh, supply uh, or in terms of component uh, supply. Uh, so I really don't see any margin impact uh, on negative margin impact. I may see an impact uh, in terms of uh, some positive uh, uh, margin impact uh, due to the due to the shortage, but simply because uh, as I said, demand worldwide on PC is still very very good, uh, and probably in Q1 uh, the entire the entire market the entire industry will not have enough uh, supply. Yeah, so I, I want to echo uh, uh, Gianfranco's uh, uh, point. So actually, uh, operational excellence uh, is uh, Lenovo's uh, core competence. Uh, so not only uh, we know how to manage the margin uh, during the supply uh, shortage. Uh, so uh, as Gianfranco said, so actually supply shortage is probably will help us to improve the uh, growth profit. Uh, but also, uh, so uh, even in the supply shortage uh, situation, uh, we still can manage our business well. Uh, the last quarter was actually a very good example. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, we plan to sell more uh, Intel-based uh, uh, chips uh, to the uh, beginning of the quarter. Uh, but we were informed, uh, so we could we couldn't get uh, uh, the supply uh, they committed uh, uh, at the beginning of the quarter, uh, in the middle of the quarter, uh, so like uh, November. Uh, but uh, we quickly uh, shifted our uh, uh, product portfolio. Uh, uh, and the supply uh, to uh, other CPU uh, uh, vendors, uh, as say AMD and uh, and uh, media uh, with the media tech plus. So that will help us to deliver this historical high uh, shipment and uh, and uh, and then, uh, uh, and also the fantastic performance in our PCSC. Uh, so actually, PCSC delivered the historical high uh, shipment, historical high revenue, and the and the GP uh, profit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's because of uh, our uh, uh, excellent uh, operation uh, capability. Uh, so we 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 had a very short period to adjust, but we did that. Uh, so uh, actually, last quarter, uh, 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 we uh, we sold uh, uh, almost 20% uh, MD, uh, best, uh, MD best MD uh, based PC, and also we sold more uh, media tech based the Chromebook. Uh, 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 as well, uh, so in Lenovo's history, uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, kind of uh, our uh, capability. Uh, we, we we didn't waste even uh, uh, one unit of the supply. Uh, so at the end of the quarter, uh, so we uh, we converted those supply uh, into the uh, finished goods and into the and to meet the customer requirement. So that's. Uh, 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 for sure, uh, Lenovo is a unique uh, core competence. We, we believe uh, that will help us in current quarter as well. Thank you, Yuanqing. Due to limited time, we are going to end our webcast now. We thank you very much for joining today's call. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me directly. The replay of this webcast will be available in the next couple of hours on our investor relations website. Thank you again for joining us.